Bright Star um, is about the relationship that British Romantic poet John Keats um, has with his neighbor Fanny Braun. Um, Keats is played by Ben Wishaw, who I remember seeing as one of the versions of Bob Dylan and I'm Not There, and um, Amy, Amy, Abby Cornish, who was in Candy and other movies, um, plays Fanny. Um, they're neighbors, as I said, and Keats is a sort of a sickly young man. Um, he dies of tuberculosis when he's 25 years old. Um, their relationship lasts for maybe three or four years before this, um, but he is not, although she's a, a beautiful um, young woman, um, he's not immediately well, maybe he is immediately attracted to her, but he is so intense um, about his poetry that, you know, a romantic relationship doesn't seem to be the thing that he's after um, until she becomes so persistent. Um, Miss Campion, who um, has directed films like An Angel at My Table and The Piano and Holy Smoke, these are all films with very strong female characters, um, presents yet another um, remarkable um, female character in, in this. Cornish, who's herself Australian, um, adapts the British accent very nicely. She's a seamstress. She makes remarkable clothing. Um, and she, f at least she feigns, and I think she eventually develops a genuine interest in poetry. She doesn't know a whole lot about poetry. And the third sort of person, this, this relationship triangle, um, is a Mr. Brown, played by Paul Schneider. Um, he might remember from a number of things. I mean, he's on the TV show Community right now, but he's, he's done a lot of, of other movies. And he's very protective of John Keats um, um, because he thinks that if Keats gets involved in a romantic relationship, somehow his poetry you know, will be compromised. Um, but indeed, I think the opposite happens. I think that Fanny Braun um, eventually inspires him. Um, he dedicates and writes some poems, including the, the title poem, Bright Star, for her, to her. Um, and this relationship develops, even though Brown doesn't want it to happen on his side, and um, Fanny's mother doesn't want it to happen because Mr. Keats is totally penniless. He can't provide for them, you know? Um, there is no Mr. Braun in the family, so I'm not sure what happened to her father, but the mother, you know, is trying to keep things together and looking for a suitable suitor for her daughter, and it is not, although he's very handsome and very talented, um, and all that, he's just not the catch that she would envision. It's kind of funny that you say, like, um, he's not really into, like, love or looking for it, where a lot of people, you know, associate <coughs> poetry with, you know, romance in itself. Yes, yes. Um, no, he's not really looking for it, but it kind of literally comes to his doorstep, and he becomes interested in her. She obviously is interested in him. She's this great flirt. She, her costumes, I mean, this will clearly, um, be in the nominating category for best costumes, if, if not best actress for Miss Cornish too. The costumes are fantastic, um, and she she's a seamstress, so she knows how to kind of express herself creatively th by what she wears, much as he expresses himself creatively um, through what he writes. And so they eventually get together. Um, their relationship is never alas consummated. Um, you know, there's all sorts of other sort of romantic encounters they have, um, and and th the film for me was successful, I think, because you know when you think about doing a film about a poet, you know, and writing poetry and all that, you think, my God, how are we going to show a writer, you know, being inspired or carrying his craft on or something. But um, Campion does this because she makes this less about, here's a genius poet. I mean, he's considered one of the great romantic poets of all time. Here's this genius poet and, and how he became this way. It's, it's less about that than about sort of the daily interactions of their life. You know, so we see her coming over for sort of poetry lessons because she wants to learn poetry. We see him going to their house for dinner. We see a dance scene where they're together. We see them out walking in this beautiful field of lavender. Um, so we, we just have sort of the ordinary kind of development of a relationship between, between two people, one of whom happens to be a genius poet, you know, but, but it's not like, oh, we're, we're talking about the genius John Keats here. It's, it's really we're talking about a guy who falls in love with a woman. Is he aware the whole time that you know she really is pursuing him, or is it is he kind of like the nerdy guy who doesn't pick up on it for a while? Um, I mean, at first maybe he doesn't quite pick up on it, but uh, I think that soon enough, you know, he, he realizes this, and he realizes that he's really attracted to her too, and and so you know he's being pulled from Mr. Brown, the Schneider character, like you must do your poetry, you know, on this side, and then from her because of course his hormones are are directed in that particular direction. So. Um, but it's, it's a Campion, I think, is, is a marvelous filmmaker. She um, wrote the, the script as well. She takes some liberties um, with actuality because um, an end title credit says something like, Fanny Braun never married, carried the torch for him her whole life. Well, she probably did carry the torch for him, but she did marry 10 years after he died. So um, that wasn't you know, quite accurate. And I don't know why she would 
Should we give us that misinformation except for maybe to increase the romantic? Yeah, yeah, yeah to romanticize it more than anything Was else. Was the uh, direction along the lines of the piano, it seems like? Yeah, I think I would say it was. I mean, yeah. uh, the, the, the piano is, I think, a master um, work it of Miss Campion's, you know, um, the way she uses color in a symbolic way, um, the way she uses landscape. Um, I, I think maybe it's, it's more evident in the piano. It's perhaps a bit more subtle here, but there's a marvelous scene where they have somehow captured these butterflies and they brought them inside this room and these butterflies are just going crazy all over the room and it's just exquisitely done. Um, the way she captures light is very impressive. Um, yeah, and the way she develops her characters I thought was very convincing. You know, I, I believed in this relationship because it wasn't just like, oh wow, you know, they see each other and they fall in love. There was this tension going on there and eventually you that saw folds. Build from the beginning. Yeah, it, it builds very, very naturally, I think, you know. Is the story told from beginning to end like as it's happening or is it like the events have already happened and being no told? it's it's told from beginning to end so okay. it's not a flashback I mean, I mean we know he's sick we hear him cough you know we know the tuberculosis is there his friends because he has no money um, take up this sort of you know fun for him to go to Italy um, where he goes and that doesn't really cure him and he comes back um, to England he he and um, Fanny become engaged before he goes away and the mother finally allows that because she sees how how desperately her daughter is in love with this fellow. Um, and he goes to Italy and he never gets better. He comes back and then he dies in England. Um, so, I mean, it's, it's a very sort of this tragic, you know, love story. And that's what makes it equally romantic, I guess, you know, because um, he could pretty much express what he felt through the poetry he wrote for her. Um, and I, I, I tell people if they're going to see this film to stay through the end credits because um, at the end the entirety of um, Ode to a Nightingale, one of his most beautiful poems, is read over the final mm -hmm. credits. And, and poetry, I mean, is, is used really effectively in the piece. I, I was impressed with that. Um, it's sometimes they're reciting it to each other, you know, like she'll see a line and he'll say a line. And, um, and it, we might think that sounds hokey or something, but in fact um, it wasn't hokey. It, it um, I thought, was, was quite effective. So. Um, I see bright things for Bright Star. I, I think it's a really nice film by Miss Campy, and I'm, I'm really impressed with her as a filmmaker anyway. And um, f for me, this would rank right up there with the piano as, as one of her best films.